Monday, welcome to Hungary. Hoi. Welcome. Welcome. To Hungary. To what? To Hungary. To Hungary. Uh -huh. Welcome to Hungary. Yes. Uh -huh. Welcome to Hungary. Welcome to Hungary. Let me get approval. Welcome to Hungary. Let me get. Hagos, me get to Tanish, Mita. Welcome to Hungary. Welcome to Hungary. Uh huh. Welcome to what? Welcome to Hungary. Hungary. Namaste, Mondele. Utasa Bhagavatu Arahatu Samma Sambuddhasa Buddham Saranam Gachami Dhammam Saranam Gachami Sangham Saranam Gachami Dutiyampi Buddham Saranam Gachami Dutiyampi Dhammam Saranam Gachami Dutiyampi Sangham Saranam Gachami Tatiyampi Buddham Saranam Gachami Tatiyampi Dhammam Saranam Gachami Tati Ampi Sangham Saranam Gachami Anati Pata Veramani Sikha Padam Samadhyami Adinadana Veramani Sikha Padam Samadhyami Kame Sumichka Chara Veramani Hello, welcome in the Prophet Kalhaisal Today's Kapusuya School Musa Vada Veramani Sikha Padam Samadhyami Sura Meraya Maja Pamadathana Veramani Sikha Padam Samadhyami Sadhu 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 So I'm here on uh my uh, twice yearly visit to our friends in Hungary. Uh, we've got uh, five Mitras here in North Hungary now, they're based, and they run a number of educational uh, activities, primarily high schools and uh, adult education classes. And they've got six sites with uh, almost a thousand students, mainly, not exclusively, but mainly gypsies, Roma, who've been excluded effectively from the secondary education system. And uh, our friends are uh, running their activities here very, very successfully. They're expanding quite fast and they rely upon the state um, giving money for educational facilities set up by religious organizations and this is all under threat so one of the things that we've been talking about quite a bit this time is mobilizing Buddhist support internationally for their work the Hungarian government uh, was recently um, voted in uh, and to be frank, it's a, an extreme right wing from a British point of view uh, government, which is fairly explicitly. Uh, the gypsies as a problem. And uh, one of their tactics has been to rewrite the laws on religious organizations. The constitution itself has been rewritten so that it 
um, bases Hungary's national identity on Christianity. Jaibin Network, which is run by our friends, has been benefiting from religious status for three years now and thereby getting the resources it needs to run the school. But from the 1st of January they will be deregistered and they will, at the end of the school year, lose their, their um, support from the government. At least half of their support from the government will go. And they won't be able to do what they're doing now. So it's a uh, quite urgent matter for them to keep their uh, activities going. They need that, that support. But it's also a civil liberties question, a matter of, of human rights, that uh, um, the state is privileging certain uh, religions over others. No Muslim, Hindu or Buddhist organisations will be registered under the Act. It's possible that in future they could be, but only with two-thirds majority of the, the parliament, and they'll never get that. So, uh, yes, we've been looking at how we can make contact with the European Buddhist Union, membership of the, of the Union, uh, international network of engaged Buddhists, and so on, to uh, lobby the Hungarian government to recognize Buddhist organizations as authentic religious organizations and especially the Jaibin network. Hello, welcome in Dr. Ambedkar High School. Please come to see our school. This is our high school. In this school we have uh, 100 students from uh, this gypsy area. We are a secondary school now. And uh, this building is old, but we renovated it in, uh, this year. We didn't finish yet. We didn't finish it in a few weeks, but we use it as a school. We have here uh, four classrooms, two big uh, classrooms and two small classrooms. And now there is lesson inside. And uh, after break, Sukuti will teach our students about Buddhism. You must know in Hungary the biggest problem is um, to school. Many uh, young students uh, don't finish elementary school, not secondary school or university. In, uh, in Hungary, in age of uh, 14 until 18, 70 percent going to secondary school. Among gypsy, uh, only 10 percent, not more, who finish secondary school. But if you are, if you go in gypsy area, in gypsy settlement, you cannot see 
Jeep C who has secondary school final exam or Jeep C who is in the university. And this is our duty. Five years before we decide we would like to create Jai Bhim Network. This is a Buddhist network. Uh, we saw it in uh, India, how Dalit do it, this, this, this kind of work for Dalit people. They have many, uh, they have very strong social network. They have many kindergarten, secondary school, and million college also in Nagpur, this is a college. And uh, the Dalit people are the leader in that movement. And in that time when I saw it, almost six years before, I decided I would like to copy this network. And we came back with Tibor and we created Jaibim Network. And, and so Jaibim Network decided we would like to uh, give knowledge for people to be taxpayer <laughs> in the country. We would like to give them knowledge. We would like to help them to be doctor, to be teacher, to be engineer, polgar, uh -huh. intellectual people. Intellectual people. Yeah. I don't. It's it's enough for us to be gypsy, who are smelly, who are stealing, who are lazy. It's enough. He would like to be member of Hungary, people of Hungary, people of Europe. We are European people. Okay. So that we are. To uh, today and yesterday, uh, we were at the, the, the school as uh, people from the Gypsy neighborhood were coming in to register as. Uh, register for the census that the, uh, the organizers, our mitras and others were sitting at computers filling in the, the, the census form uh, for them uh, and especially so that they could register their religious affiliations um, all as, as a hope of uh, uh, persuading the government that there really is a substantial gypsy Buddhist uh, presence and uh, give, get, giving that official recognition. Much better in Slovakia because the economic situation of Slovakia is much better. Than is it? And uh, for some years, I didn't know that. I but thought Slovakia. Not, not the buildings. The, these are the buildings, for example. Yeah.
no other no, possibility? No, yeah. Uh, one family gets uh, 60 euros by month as a social grant. And now it will be uh, 30 euros because of the uh, world crisis. Yeah, so it's not possible to, to, to live from this money. And if they go to Germany, they will go uh, 360 euros by month. Just pay? As, yeah. So they say at least, yeah. yeah. There are no people who would deal with the problem at all. Yeah. Because, of course, uh, it depends on government policy first. But uh, there should be people who, who deal with the government to do it. Yeah. yeah. And the local government and so on. Yeah. There are no people who you know, would deal with it. don't like being filmed or photographed. <laughs> because of uh, poverty and uh, uh, shame, because of the shame that they are poor. They know that it's not normal to live this way in a European country. <laughs> they are aware of this situation. Uh, two young girls uh, came to our school to, to learn. To the, 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 the blondish girl and yeah. the, the other one with her. I guess uh, yeah, their family gave uh, them to us because of human trafficking. Ah. Uh, they are... Uh, Targets for. Yeah. So it's a question of coming to this sort of place, making some connections. Yeah. Some people will respond. Yeah. Some people will want to they know, know more. that we are Buddhists. They know better that we are Buddhists than uh, in sure, Hungary. Sure. Our we decide our duty is to do this kind of not social work, this is not social work. It's social work also, but this is our religion, to help for people who need our help. If it is Buddhism, we are the best Buddhists in all Europe. If it's, I don't know what, we are the best in this thing, I, I feel it. And I like, I like it to do, it's very good. And yeah, and I hope. Yeah, it's very interesting. In the, last week we were in um, in France, in uh, EBU, in European Buddhist EBU, EBU in European Buddhist Union. Did you join? Yeah, and we joined in last year in EBU, and. Uh, yeah, I told them, they asked us what, what we do here in JIVIM Network. And I told them a very simple example. Uh, many Western European Buddhists, Western European people going regularly in third world, in yeah. India, in Africa, everywhere, and they are as a volunteer. They do volunteers work, they teach, they, you know. And I told them, we don't go to third world, we remain in Hungary, in Gypsy area, because it's the same. 
serve the region. Miss you. Mission. Mission. In China, it, it may, maybe it's not it many, but yeah. in Hungary, of course, it's, uh, it's a huge amount. And uh, people like it very much, uh, because it's a new thing uh, to, to have a Buddhist prayer book. It didn't exist in Hungary. Uh, HU001, this is the first Buddhist prayer book made in Taiwan. And uh, now, uh, we would like to uh, have music and, and, and song to it. <laughs> because uh, gypsies uh, like very much to sing and dance. And uh, maybe Buddhism uh, is, is a little bit without uh, singing and dancing. And it's high time to <laughs> enlarge. change in ideas and perspective or what in Buddhism we call view. There needs to be a, 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 a fundamental shift in one's way of thinking about oneself and the world one is in. Uh, I think that's true of any change, um, any positive change. So it's extremely important that not only do people get uh, you know, better jobs and better housing facilities and so forth, but that, that uh, they, they get a better way of looking at things, a better way of looking at themselves, a better way of looking at their world, uh, because their, their, their world is to a large extent constructed from the ideas that they have about it, their ideas that they are you know, an excluded people, the idea that they're victims, the idea that they're uh, um, apart, all of that has a, a very um, strong determining effect upon them. So it's very, very important that there's a change in ideas. In fact, in some ways, it's the key. This was Dr. Ambedkar's great insight. And you could say that this is the primary, the primary importance of Dr. Ambedkar's thinking, that uh, it's uh, ideas that change. Well, he said of caste that uh, caste is a notion, a state of mind, and what mind uh, creates, mind can undo so that you get rid of caste not by constitutional change, although that's important, not by legal provisions, although that's important, not by um, uh, you know, affirmative action, not by uh, um, social welfare and so forth, although all that is important. The fundamental point is that you change people's ideas about themselves and about what it is to be a member of society. And uh, that, I think, is what um, we're trying to do here. We're trying to give uh, people a way of thinking about themselves that is more constructive for them, that gives them a sense of dignity and of quality and of hope and purpose. Uh, you could say that's Buddhism. That is Buddhism. Um, but it's Buddhism initially at a, at a, uh, a non-specifically Buddhist level. The first thing that Buddhism really teaches is that you are responsible for yourself under the law of karma. That uh, what you do determines the way you experience in the future and what experience comes to you. So uh, we're working primarily here at the karmic level. 
are helping people to take responsibility for themselves. Uh, and that is the, the most fundamental act of social work, is uh, giving people the tools to look after themselves, to help themselves. And the basic tool is the uh, recognition that they are responsible and capable. So, yes, Buddhism is very, very important, but in this um, quite fundamental way, which is really just deeply human, Buddhism is always deeply human. So what we're, what we're teaching people is uh, how to take responsibility for themselves and make the changes in their own lives. This is Buddhism in action. You know, dealing now, our friends here, Tibor and Janosch, dealing with uh, a crisis in the uh, where the authorities are trying to uh, prevent people from declaring themselves to be affiliated to the Jaibian network in the census. Um, well, we're dealing with that as skillfully, as um, ethically as we can, but as firmly as we can. That is Buddhism. This is Buddhism in action. And uh, yes, I, I, I think it's something that we've we've got used to in the West, in the in the developed West, is thinking that Buddhism is about um, yeah, just meditating and uh, studying the Dhamma, but it's it's really about. Well, what you do moment by moment in the situation. And here we are in this situation where people are suffering, they're, they're oppressed, they've been excluded for, for hundreds of years. And uh, well, we're trying to help them help themselves. That is Buddhism. I'm not resenting you and your question, but uh, something that I get asked this sort of question so often is this to do with Buddhism and so forth. But I, I feel quite strongly about it that uh, we need to understand is much more about this grassroots level of, of action, or as much this grassroots level of action as uh, you know, sitting on a mountain meditating.